So what is the ideal study schedule of a medical student? That's exactly what we'll break down in this video. All right, guys, what is going on? Welcome to another episode in the MD Journey, as well as the TMJ Show. My name is Lux. I'm an internal medicine resident helping people just like you succeed on their medical journey with less stress. And today is going to be one of my favorite videos that I'll probably do on the channel, which is breaking you down what the ideal study schedule of a medical student will be like. I'm going to do it on my tablet, so hopefully you guys can see step by step how I think about setting up your study schedule, and hopefully you guys can use a similar approach to help you out on your journey. Before we begin, you know, if you're new to the channel, if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting that notification bell to get two videos like this one on thrown to you at a weekly basis, as well as supporting this video specifically and hitting that like button. And also don't forget to comment down below with any questions you have regarding studying and doing better in medical school. I'm going to go ahead and take you straight into my tablet. And essentially what we're going to do today is I'm going to break to you kind of how do you go from point A to point C in studying? How do you get from the part where you acquire the information um, to the part where you're studying and prepping for your exams? Um, and I'm already going to apologize because my selling is awful, um, but we're going to get the point anyways. So, you know, the first step is you need to acquire the information. And then we're going to go into step C, we'll call it four, but that may change for now, is prepping for exam and what your study schedule should be at different parts of that. So essentially, we can go ahead and break it down on a Monday to Friday to Saturday schedule. So we're going to say Monday, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday. And then we can just say weekend because I'm going to assume that your Saturday and Sunday schedules are going to be kind of similar or you pick one of the two days to do some study. Now Monday, what I like to do, you know, you're typically are going to have some obligations from like 9 to 12, that may be a lecture. And I'll probably continue all the way through from 12 to 1, you'll probably have a lunch or something. And then from 1 to all the way till we'll just say 9 p.m. is kind of the question zone. Like what should I do during this time? Now obviously you may have obligations like a lab, you know, if you're doing anatomy lab or different things during these afternoons, but just assume that primarily we'll talk about the ones that are open and how should you be studying them. So I'm gonna assume initially that you're a class goer and I'll give you some different ideas of how to approach it. But the first thing that I like to do between that one to nine slot, ideally you can make this shorter or you stop studying at 7 p.m. But again, we'll just say one to nine for now, um, is to go ahead and ask yourself, step number one, is how do you want to review the material so you want to go ahead and do it through several options you know you can do it through flashcards um, do you want to create an outline do you want to kind of essentially write down what you saw um, do you like to do group studying and meeting with people but the main thing here is the first hour or so that you're going to be spending studying is where you probably have the most motivation you know you've gone through a whole day of school you know you need to study you finally sit down that takes a lot of motivation to do in the first place and you have to get started and get the ball rolling so you don't want to start with something that you don't enjoy so i recommend doing something that's one easy um, to get started with and two able to kind of keep you motivated um, so let's say you figure out that your, your preferred form of review is doing flashcards. So once you decide what your form of review is, number two is to give yourself a cutoff on how long you want to be spending doing that specific technique for each lecture. Um, unfortunately, sometimes med students think that because you have eight hours to study, you can spend as much as you want on lecture number one and eventually finish that and go to lecture two and go to lecture three. What happens is that you'll spend an excessively long amount of time um, on lecture one, maybe an average amount of time on lecture two, and not enough on lecture three, even if you get to it. So you have to create yourself kind of blocks. You know, how much time do I see this lecture taking? So you want to create a cutoff time on when you think you'll be done. So the way I do it is I evaluate all, okay, all my lectures. So let's say this is lecture one, two, and three, and I kind of give them percentages, like how long do I think it'll take me to do using the technique that I like. Um, so if I'm using flashcards, you know, usually I can do, let's just say lecture one is 30 pages or it's um, 50 slides. And then let's say lecture two is 25, so pretty similar, and it's 40 slides. And then we'll say lecture three is about 20, you know, 20 pages, but we'll say that the professor got a little crazy and they made them 60 slides. Now, when I do this, I can take a step back and already see kind of where my study schedules will may have some struggles. So I can see that because I like to use flashcards and you guys can check out my technique that I prefer using in med school, um, because I go primarily off the slides when I'm learning, 
a 60 slide um, lecture is going to take me much more time than that 40 slide and that 50 slide. So I need to be able to account for um, that extra time towards my last lecture. So what I'm going to say is, well, you know, 60 is going to take me, let's say, one and a half hours. I'm just making up time at this point, but you pick what you think is comfortable for the amount of work you need to do. And I say, well, I can do 40 in about an hour, and I can do, you know, 50 in about an hour and 15 uh, minutes. So you pick that time. So now you kind of have uh, an approximate approach of what you want to do. So now we're going to say we're starting the study at 1. So about 1 to one thirty is where I'm just gathering my information and trying to get ready for the day. It also counts for any kind of laziness on my part to actually sit down and get to work. Um, so I'm going to say just, you know, prepare. Um, and then eventually from one thirty, sorry about that, um, to an hour and 15 minutes later. So that would be, I do my math right, and that'll be about, uh, what is that, 2.45 um, is how I'll be spending doing lecture number one. And then what I like to do next is I like to give myself a 15 minute break in between major tasks um, to one, account for any task taking a little bit longer than I need, and two, also just giving myself a break because usually by that time you need one. So I'll say the next task will start at three o'clock. And because I said the next lecture will take me about an hour, um, we'll say three to four uh, will be lecture two. And then we're gonna go ahead and add another 15 minute kind of break uh, in case um, the next task takes us a bit of time. And we're gonna go from 4 to 15. We said lecture three is gonna be our longest one. It's gonna take us an hour and a half. So that's gonna bring us down to about 5.45. And as a bonus tip, you know, as you get further and further into your study schedule, your last task is usually gonna take a little bit more time than you think, just because you're more fatigued, you have less motivation. So usually I add a 15 minute buffer and you can choose to do this if you want. Uh, but I usually will say that it will go until 6 p.m. Um, that just gives me a little bit more flexibility if I'm tired or if I need more frequent breaks to say I can still get it done um, in my desired time interval. So from one to about six o'clock, you've reviewed all three lectures of your materials. Now step number three, is preparing for the next day or if you don't enjoy preparing for the next day lecture maybe you just don't enjoy reading the syllabus or slides you may want to have the lecture explain it to you so then you can go out and learn that's completely fine you can use this time to go ahead and review for exams and this is kind of what i would recommend them do again you guys can check out the link down below to see my full study system now similar to our last task we want to kind of give a time block on the specific task and so what i would say is essentially the good way to go about doing this is you want to ask yourself what's your cutoff time you know is it 9 p.m is it 7 p.m and ask yourself how much more time do i want to be spending each day like what time do i want to finish doing everything now if you said it's 7 p.m then you go ahead and look at your schedule and you're saying well i'm finishing at 6 p.m i'm going to give myself a 15 minute block so i'm not going to start until 6 15 and that means if i'm going to go all the way to 7 then i can give myself 45 minutes to review and this could be doing you know, practice questions through a question bank. You can be doing flashcards from old lectures that you've had, um, but you picked during this time. Again, this is not to say, here's a study schedule. This is when you should be reading. This is when you should do a flashcard. This is when you should be doing outlines. But this is how I approach evaluating what I need to do each day and also still getting done at a reasonable hour. Now, this is going to essentially break down my weekdays. And I'm gonna tell you kind of how I would break down each of my weekends. So for the weekend schedule, I'm gonna assume Saturdays and Sundays are both fair game, although I recommend you take at least a half day off for each of those. Um, again, you guys can check out more blog posts that will link down below um, to help you. But again, I think that's the best time to help you get revitalized. For in the weekend, what I would do is I would spend um, one half day, so usually from like nine to 12, and I would review all of the lectures from the first half of the week. So I would review you know, lectures from Monday to Wednesday, and then either Saturday evening, uh, which will be approximately, let's just say from three to six, I would do the rest. So I would go ahead and review from Thursday to Friday. And usually I would put a nice solid um, six hours on a weekend day. Now, if you follow my principle of giving yourself at least a half day off, then Sunday you can do a few things. You know, you can wake up early or get some sleep. And from nine to approximately 10, uh, about two hours, you can do some form of review for that week or the week before. Um, that is totally up to you, but essentially this is going to be exam prep. So whatever exam is gonna be coming up for that topic you're learning about, uh, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna do practice questions? Do you wanna review the material from the previous week and just do as much as you can in two hours? And this should be like nine to 11, sorry. And then I would give myself another two hours 
to do one of two things. Again, this depends on your preference. So either do some more review or prep for the next day's lecture. So if I like making my flashcards ahead of time, like I told you guys in that video down below, then you can use this and this would be a perfect time to do it. So that guys would be how I would lay down my weekend study schedules. Now again, I want to put it together because I know it gets a little bit messy on the tablet. So essentially, you know, your weekdays, you know, you go to lecture in the morning, although I recommend that if you don't have to, and a lot of your institutions may not force you to be mandatory, then you can go ahead and speed listen um, from home and cut half of your time here. So instead of three hours, I'm just gonna be marking how much time each activity takes. So instead of three hours, um, you may be able to take that down to like one and a half if you can listen up to X. And then the second thing you want to do is you want to start your review. Um, so whatever method that is for you. And again, the way you do this is you evaluate how much information is on each lecture, each you know uh, course, um, and you go ahead and extrapolate how much time you need to do it. Now this really depends on your study system as well as how long the lectures are. They can take three to six hours. And then to finally three on those days is either do more review. So we can just call this again, test prep or prepare um, for the next day. And usually I will keep this under one to 1.5 hours. And so things like practice questions, question banks, more flashcards if you want to do it, um, those are good. And then in terms of weekend, um, I would say the first thing you want to do is review the lectures from Monday to Wednesday. And this can take you three to four hours. And again, ideally you've already done the review the first time. So this is going to be a little bit quicker than the review the last time. So if you're asking, can I do a review in three or four hours? The answer should ideally be yes, but you need a better study technique to get there. Uh, and then number two would be at a different time block, whether it's the same day or on the next weekend day. I'm gonna go ahead and start reviewing um, Thursday to Friday. Now usually this takes you less time because you only have to do two lectures, but sometimes if you take Friday evening off, for example, you may not have time to do that review um, for the weekday, so you can spend more time doing it on that weekend day. And then three is to go ahead and do test prep. And I usually will dedicate another two to three hours of this. Again, one thing I want you guys to focus on is when I create these study schedules, I'm giving them in the form of blocks because then you can say, well, maybe I don't have enough time to do it on this day. I'm gonna move this time block dedicated for this specific task. I'm gonna move it to another day. Or I'm gonna split it into two and I'm gonna move it here and here in my study schedule. This way you don't become overwhelmed, but it requires you to look at each task and ask yourself, realistically, how long will this take me? Um, and then you can put together a nice study schedule that'll get you from both acquiring the information as well as studying and preparing for exams. And the last thing I wanna leave you guys with is kind of how to study on test week, cause that's gonna be a little bit different. Essentially what I would do is, usually I would start prepping already two weeks in advance. And I know a lot of your institutions may have tests on a different schedule, but for this video, I'm gonna give you an example where you have a test every four weeks because that's usually typical for a lot of institutions. Um, so I'm going to say um, step number one is to start studying um, two weeks in advance. This just gives you 14 days to review and I know you haven't learned all the information yet. You're still getting lectures as you're starting your prep. But essentially if I broke it down into Monday, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, and then we'll say Saturday, Sunday, I'll say week, week one, week two, um, and I'm gonna say the test day is here. Then what I would tell you to do is these days are going to be a little bit more intensive is to find a nice uh, two hour block if you can to start reviewing. So let's just say for example, you have 20 lectures to do. Um, so go ahead and divide them by the number of days you have available. So this gives you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven 11. 11 days to study. Um, for the 20-ish lectures that you have. And one thing that I like to do personally is I like to review each lecture twice. So instead of 20 lectures, we'll say I have um, 40 lectures and I only have 11 days to do it. That breaks down to about three to four lectures per day. Um, so during these two to four hours on a Monday evening, um, during my review of test prep time, I'll go ahead and do um, lecture one to um, three. And then so one, two, or three, or lecture one through four depends on what you want to do. And then you can just continue to count over on each respective day to account for it. So this would be a lecture, um, we'll say four to eight, and then nine to 12, um, and so forth and so on. So this may be uh, lecture 13 to 17, 
Um, and then maybe, you know, you're still on lecture 14 or 15 in your class material. So what I would just say is go ahead and start over at lecture one through four, and then go ahead and do five through nine. And then eventually you can add the new lectures into that system. So go ahead and plan out your two weeks, ask yourself what three to four lectures or however many you need, depending on how much material is on your quiz, and give yourself that two hour block each evening to do it to where you can repeat each lecture review twice. Now keep in mind, I know this seems like a lot, but the first day, the day of the material, you've already reviewed the material after a class, ideally you reviewed it now on the weekends, you may have reviewed it again on a test prep session on a weekend when you're reviewing old material, and now you're going through both your fourth and fifth iteration of this material, so you should begin faster and faster review each time, as long as you're using the technique that is well suitable for you. So that guys breaks down how I would look at a study schedule when you're acquiring information as well as when you're prepping on test week, kind of how to design it in a way where you look at all of your to-dos in the form of blocks where you can still get everything done. But if you want a more over-the-shoulder approach of how I study, you can check out one of the videos that I've made on YouTube that I'll link down below, or you can get a free eight-step video course that kind of breaks you step-by-step -step on a lot of these different techniques. And if you want even more help on creating a study system that is perfect for you, personalized to you, then we do have a three-week study system to help you do just that on the mdjourney.com. It's called Level Up Your Study. You can actually see what a lot of our past students kind of results they're getting, the reviews that they're giving, um, and those will all be linked down below. That's pretty much it for this video, guys. Hopefully you got some golden nuggets um, from it and found it helpful. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section down below. Um, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, as well as that notification bell, I'm putting out videos just for you on Wednesdays and Sundays each week. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this video, joining me on my journey. Hopefully I've been a little help to you on yours. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.